Hi, I'm Dr. Emil Tompkins, and quite often I'm asked, what is the, what is the best non-drug alternative for children who are dealing with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder? And whether it's ADD or ADHD, there are certain things that we want to consider. Number one, um, our, our kids deal a lot of times with food sensitivities and food allergies. Now, it's not that the food sensitivities and food allergies are, are causing ADHD, but when we have problems where our body isn't responding well to the nutrients that we're taking in, it begins to affect our mood, it begins to affect our behavior, it, it will make the problems that we have worse. So identifying where our, our food sensitivities, our food allergies might be, can make a big difference. Wheat is a big culprit because in a small percentage of the population, wheat and gluten can be a, a, actually a, a neurotoxin and when we're dealing with something neurological like attention deficit disorder, we definitely want to make sure that we're not doing anything that's neurotoxic. So wheat is a very important one. Some people have trouble with dairy, corn, eggs, soy. Um, so for a lot of people, we start with an elimination diet, removing a lot of things and seeing how the body responds to that, slowly reintroducing it back. And as we do, we can see a little bit better how the body is responding to the things that we're taking in. One of the other things we want to think about is sugar. Um, sugar increases inflammation in the body um, and increasing that inflammation in the body can have an effect on our behavior and just how we feel in general. Um, also hyperactivity has been linked um, in some ways to the amount of sugar that our kids are taking in and we know with the standard American diet we're getting entirely too much sugar these days. Now the next area that we're going to look is uh, making sure that the brain has the proper nutrients that it needs to function well and there's a, a specific essential fatty acid called DHA. DHA is found in high, relatively high concentrations in fish oil and that is something that that our body does not produce, so we need to make sure that we're taking it in. So you can get it from fish, that's one way to, to get it. Um, however, most of us aren't eating enough fish. And it's also been said that the f a lot of fish is contaminated with mercury, so they recommend that you don't necessarily eat a lot of fish. So how do we get around that? You take a very good high quality supplement of fish oil that has high amounts of DHA. DHA is the fatty acid in the brain. You absolutely need that. Um, the, the next thing we want to look at is now we've talked about um, addressing food allergies, addressing sugar intake, uh, making sure we have proper essential fatty acids for brain development. Now the next step is just making sure that our nervous system is functioning absolutely as well as possible. One thing in our office that we do is, is we evaluate the child's nervous system in a way to see how well the brain is sending messages down the spinal cord out to different nerves to different parts of the body. Actually, I'll show you. I'll, I'll use our, our model here. So the brain sends messages down the spinal cord out of these nerves. Those nerves travel to different parts of the body. And as long as that pathway is clear, our body will function really well. But different things can happen where little bones in the spine shift out of position. And the most important area is right up top here at C1, right at the atlas, because the nerves that come out of that area, one of the places they travel to, is back up into the brain. So as the body is sending messages back up into the brain, this area is going to uh, is going to affect that. So we try to find those areas where the spine is shifted out of position, but more importantly than that, we try to find those areas that we're putting pressure on the nerves. If we're putting pressure on those nerves, that's going to affect our health negatively. That's going to affect our child's behavior and attention. And when we correct that, we start to see changes. Some of our kids, when we start making these changes, we see correction, corrective changes right away. Some of our kids, when we start making these changes, it begins a, a developmental cascade that over time we start to see these developmental changes that we weren't seeing before. Either way, your child benefits greatly from a properly functioning nervous system. In our office, we see lots of kids on a, a daily basis because of this, and we'll be happy to take care of your family. I'm Dr. Emil Tompkins, and I hope you have a great and healthy day.